So this is our Bacatum by Bacatum cross, PA001, yellow Brazilian starfish cross to sugar rush peach. And you can see we're getting a lot of the uh, traits out of yellow Brazilian starfish. So we have the constriction on the neck of the fruit down there. And then we have the projections on each of the lobes going around the side. These would be like the arms of the starfish. Um, and we do have a bit longer of a pepper. So if, you, if you've grown yellow Brazilian starfish, you know it's kind of squat. This is an intermediate uh, length of pepper. So that's coming out of sugar rush peach. Uh, the plant's a bit more tolerant, or it's more shade adapted. It's a bit more susceptible to high light levels. Early on, I burnt a bunch of the leaves from being too close to the LED lamp. Uh, we do have a little bit of pubescence on the leaves, if you can see. Just a tiny, tiny amount there. Um, nice plant. You know, I, unfortunately, I topped it early on, so it ended up being a, uh, a two-liter plant here. But we're getting a pretty good crop on here. I'm curious to see what the fruit are going to taste like, and obviously I'm looking forward to the F2 on this guy. Uh, he's probably the slowest plant in terms of uh, fruit development and ripening. But uh, hopefully our patience will pay off here. It's a nice looking plant. So this is PA2 and PA3. These are the crosses with habanata. And as you can see, uh, both of these plants kind of have a crappy architecture. Uh, you have the two main leaders coming up here, and then you have a whole half of a missing plant, essentially. And it's just it never really developed well. And then this plant is kind of behaving the same. You know, you have really strong growth at the back here, and then you have really kind of weak growth in the middle. And uh, being that we have two plants that are, you know, they're almost identically, identical genetically, uh, for both of them to have the same kind of architecture traits, it, it argues that it's probably not environmental. And so this is something we're really going to have to keep an eye on in the F2, see if we can get away from it. That's, you know, not going to be ideal in production. Uh, but we do have some ripe fruit in here, you can see in there. Uh, it looks like we got three fully mature, and then we got a couple more on the way. And uh, they got a really pretty color to them, so I'm anxious to see what the F2s are going to look like. They're very vibrant red, you can see. And then the other plant is a little bit further behind, but we do have the first fruit uh, starting to transition back there. So we'll take a closer look on the next update and get a better comparison uh, of the different fruit traits compared to the other F1s. So these are the crosses PA004 and PA005. And so these are the crosses with Ahi Charpita and Shira Roja by SC. And as you can see, we are getting ripe fruit. Uh, if you'd like to see a discussion of the genetics of these plants, uh, the fruit shapes and architecture traits, I encourage you to take a look at our last video. Uh, on this one, we're just going to be kind of looking at some of these mature fruit. And then in the next video, I'm going to be evaluating some of these plants that do have the five mature fruit to look at. So take a look at this guy first. And so you can see we are ripening to a, a nice vivid red color. And uh, we're getting about two fruit per node. And this was definitely the uh, fastest to mature in the lot of all of our F1s. So that's kind of an interesting trait and something that we're going to keep an eye on. So three of the trees, uh, trees, plants, uh, they do have ripe fruit on them. Uh, two of them seem to have five mature fruit, and then the other two either uh, have about three or four or none yet. You can see in the back that guy's uh, being a little slow. That's okay. So in the next video, I'm going to do uh, fruit evaluations for these two guys in the front here. And then we'll take a look at the average mass, uh, the bricks, and that's the dissolved sugar. And then kind of score them on you know, some of these architecture traits. If you remember back to the last video, we were talking about how this plant uh, kind of didn't fill out the middle very well, if you can see it there. And then it's got these four projections in the corners where the growth was strongest. So I, I don't know if that's genetic or environmental at this point, but it's definitely going to be something that uh, we keep an eye on in the F2. And I'll probably dock the plant a few points for it, just in case. So there you go. Kind of looks like a late Christmas under there. Very pretty. Alright, let's take a look at the, uh, the next cross here. So here we have PA6 and PA7, and these are the crosses with Fidalgo Roja. And you can see just how beautiful and dark all those leaves and immature fruit are. And then uh, if you look up in the top there, you'll see one ripe fruit. 
and uh, that's not the order the fruit should ripen in and so I suspect there's something wrong with that for maybe some kind of internal damage that's releasing ethylene but uh, other than that we have no ripe fruit just yet you can see they're all still dark green with a little bit of the uh, purple anthocyanin blush and so we're we're waiting to see when these guys are gonna ripen up but it looks like they'll be another couple weeks probably about the same timing as PA1 uh, yellow Brazilian starfish across the sugar rush beach so uh, I won't, won't waste much time here and uh, we'll check back in with these in the next update so this is PA008 this is the uh, F1 with pink habanero long and as you can see uh, we don't have ripe fruit yet but they're well on their way and uh, this is that plant that has the uh, kind of unique architecture the other chinensis kind of do that sympodial growth where they kind of end up looking fractal and square this one has a bit of a different architecture to it it kind of did that first bifurcation as you can see there and then uh, branched uh, some branches lower and kind of came up with a much more uh, capsicum annum looking type plant so I have high hopes for this guy but uh, like I said no no ripe fruit to look at just yet and uh, we'll catch up with this guy in the next video.